is Troy, Kilo Foxtrot 7, Sierra Echo Yankee. Today I wanted to share my Yagyu G106. I bought this from Radio Oddity uh, a few weeks ago. I did buy this with my own money, so it's not uh, it was not given to me to try out or anything like that. After watching some YouTube videos and seeing the ups and downs on this radio, I saw that there seemed to be more ups than downs. And at $239, which is what it's at right now on Radio Oddity in a get it bundle offer where you get the radio and you also get the uh, D19 USB radio interface for FT8 and digital modes. So I decided to get one to try it. I wanted something that I could take out for summits on the air or parks on the air where I didn't have to worry about, you know, it getting broke. If it gets broke or it falls or it quits working at $239, it doesn't hurt as bad as something like a, uh, like an ICOM 705 at around $1,300 or like an Lcraft K KX2, which I think is up to around $1,600 now. This thing I could take out, abuse, not worry about it, and it can sit in my car. It doesn't matter. So I took it out for a summits on the air activation and I mean this thing really actually works pretty well. It's you know it's basic. There's nothing too much to it. It does have an, a keyer built into it. It does have some filtering uh, and so it works for CW quite well. I've made a few contacts with FT8 as well. It works fine with that. You do have to, you know, like I said, use the D198 and you have the cables that come out and run out of here into the back of the radio back here. So mostly I use CW or digital. I very rarely am I using sideband. So this radio works pretty well for that. And at the price point of $239, you know, I bought my uh, LNR uh, Mountain Topper several years ago. And of course, this is not a comparison to this radio, but, uh, you know, I think this was around $250, I think, when I bought it. And, you know, and this is just a three-band CW transceiver. This does 80 meters up to 10 meters, CW, sideband, digital modes, and it, I get about, you know, you can get about up to seven watts depending on the band you are on. And it does have, you know, you can turn down the, the power, um, there's three settings for power adjustment, high, medium, low. And I, I haven't really went through to see all the differences. And there's quite a few videos on YouTube that cover the operations of this video or cover the operations of this radio. So one of the things that when I noticed when I got it was it is, it's heavy. Uh, I think it weighs around a pound and a half as it comes. And so a lot of, I found a lot of weight were in these knobs. So these aluminum knobs are solid aluminum. And so between this knob, the volume knob, and the little ground screw in the back, I decided to pull those off. I 3D printed a knob, a um, tuning knob, and a volume knob. And I saved about 2.4 ounces doing that. Now that was with, I also added this little uh, kickstand to uh, kick the radio up a little bit. So this kickstand is on Thing Universe. I'll put a link in the description below on uh, where to get that. I also have the knobs that I designed and put built for this that I will put that on Thing Universe as well. So yeah, what do I think of this little radio? This thing, you know, I'm gonna use this uh, quite a bit for summits on the air and parks on the air. This, I mean, it, it does work for what I want it to do. And, um, you know, I'm gonna, I can abuse it and uh, not feel bad about it. Now, um, I did get a case for it. I got off Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below for that. Uh, I got the idea from Temporary Offline Ham Radio. Steve, he uh, he had the same setup uh, where he put that in a case. Also, if you get a little more interested in this radio and you want to kind of understand more of the use, uh, Steve, Temporary Offline Ham Radio, he does a bunch of videos on this radio, including a full teardown of the inside so you can see what it looks like. And, that, and you'll see why this thing is built like a tank uh, because there's a very large... Um, heat sink inside 
you can run this thing all day long on FT8 and CW and not uh, worry about it overheating. Uh, when I was out on Summits on the Air, I was in the sun. This thing was getting fairly warm just because of that, and this thing just kept going. Uh, so um, I'm going to, if you're interested in getting one, I'll leave a link in the description below, an affiliated link that uh, will get you some uh, savings. So one of the only things that really bugged me about this radio and I plan on uh, Remini that uh, I actually ordered a cable from Amazon and I will be building my own uh, cable so I can do that is there's no headphone jack like on the back of the radio. The only way to use headphones is to plug a mono a headphone plug here and it only works with as mono and then you push the knob here and it goes to this speaker mic. So I like using headphones when I'm running CW, and so that that makes it a little challenging for me. So I will be building my own little cable here where I can plug headphones in and have left and right on my headphones. And I also, you know, this mic works. I've done a little testing with it. It does work, but, there, you know, it's, it's a little bulky. So trying to save a little weight, I plan on using a K K6ARK's uh, little mic uh, that I've 3D printed. So I will probably use that with the cable once I'm made, and I'll have a little pigtail that comes off where I can do that. But other than that, that's the only thing that uh, bugged me about the radio. It, uh, like I said, the CW is mostly what I use. It does have a scope, a nice basic scope here that allows you to, uh, you know, see signals, which is kind of helpful for trying to find a, a um, spot on the band. But, it, you know, it's a basic radio. Uh, nothing fancy. I don't need anything fancy for my needs. Uh, you know, I'm going out, making contacts, and then uh, coming back. So, 73. Thanks for watching.